The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. Hello, Arkham Horror fans. Uh, glad you could join me today for the stream. On today's uh, episode, we are going to be playing Carolyn Fern for the first time. Uh, somebody during the last stream ad asked me which uh, investigators I had uh, not played, and Carolyn is the uh, only one that... Uh, I believe that I haven't played yet, so we are going to give uh, uh, her uh, a spin today. I've uh, got a deck uh, from Arkham DB that was built by Akan Q and uh, one of the uh, prolific deck builders over at Arkham DB. So we are going to give this deck a try and see uh, how it does against uh, Carolyn's Old Stomping Ground, one of my favorite uh, scenarios in the Arkham Horror LCG, that being the Unspeakable Oath. And if we have time, we will uh, also be playing uh, probably Echoes of the Past for uh, something uh, maybe a little easier after the Unspeakable Oath because uh, it can be a tough one. But it is uh, one of my favorites. It's a, a great scenario. Lots of uh, you need clues. You need to get enemies. Movement is important. Lots of good stuff there. Let's uh, take a look at the deck that we are going to be playing. It's called Athletic Psychologist. It is built by Akan Q over at Arkham DB. And uh, we shall take a look at it now. Now, uh, Akan Q's deck is a level zero deck that uh, has... Uh... Hi, Huck. Hi, Tim. How are you? Uh, glad that you enjoyed the, the Wendy run. Hello, Crazy Gamer. Hello, John. Hello, I cannot pronounce your name, uh, unfortunately, but uh, hello, the, the Cyrillic alphabet. If, uh, if I knew how to pronounce it, I would, but uh, thank you very much for joining me on the, all the same. Uh, as I was saying, uh, Akan Q's deck is a level zero deck. This is an upgraded version of that. Uh, we went with nine experience points uh, this, uh, for this uh, particular deck. Uh, most of the upgrades are uh, recommendations by Akan Q. Uh, we have uh, Meat Cleaver, which is uh, obviously very good for, uh, for Carolyn because it does heal uh, horror. And it will also help her uh, woeful uh, combat. Uh, that is one of my trepidations about playing Carolyn is her uh, low combat and low agility. Her uh, enemy management uh, abilities are both weak. So that will be uh, a struggle for her, I think. But we do have Meat Cleaver. That'll give us plus one combat, plus two if we, uh, if we can lower our sanity far enough. And then if we can heal Horror with the Meat Cleaver, we will gain resources. Uh, we've got St. Hubert's Key in there to give uh, Carolyn's invest intellect a little bit of a bump. She's got four intellect, which is above average. And uh, with St. Hubert's Key, she will... Uh, Sergey Karpov. All right. Well, welcome, Sergey. Glad that you could make it today. Uh, we've got uh, Peter Sylvester too. Of course, he gives her uh, plus one willpower and plus one agility, as well as a uh, he ability to heal horror. So if we can dump some horror on him as well, we can heal it and then gain even more resources. Uh, in addition to the meat cleaver, we've got an enchanted blade in there for a little bit of extra damage. Uh, Forbidden Knowledge is a, a good call for this uh, sort of deck where we can generate resources and take more horror, which we can then heal and generate even more resources. Uh, this uh, The original deck has two copies of Shortcut, uh, but this has uh, I've upgraded one of those to Pathfinder. That could be very important in this particular scenario because movement is uh, essential. So uh, being able to get a free move. Uh, I need to, uh, the uh, movement is so important in this uh, particular uh, scenario. So the Pathfinder will hopefully come in handy and we've got two copies of physical training. We will be leaning on that heavily. Hopefully all those resources we generate using uh, the Meat Cleaver Peter Sylvester combo will uh, be able to will be able to feed those into physical training so we will be actually able to uh, hit something. We uh, also have as far as our events package we've got logical reasoning that heals horror the one copy of shortcut 
two copies of Ward of Protection to protect us from some of the really nasty treacheries in this uh, particular scenario. I'm thinking uh, straight jacket for one and uh, corrosion being the other that uh, we really need to watch out for. Uh, those can both ruin our days. Uh, we've got, uh, and two copies of Working the Hunch, those are uh, in there for high shroud locations in order to help us uh, grab a clue if we don't have quite have the intellect we need in order to uh, succeed. The skills, we've got Eureka, that will allow us to tutor up a card we need. Inquiring Mind, of course, has the three wild icons as long as we've got a clue. Steadfast gives us uh, even more... Uh, uh, combat icons if we need them and uh, take the initiative uh, gives us a, a bunch of wild icons but that does have the restriction that we need to play it as our first action uh, on our first as early in that sorry not as our first action but as early in the turn as uh, as possible and uh, finally we've got two copies of unexpected courage and uh, rounding it all out, we've got Hypnotic Therapy, which is uh, Carolyn's signature asset and, uh, and uh, her signature weakness, uh, Rational Thought. So I'm uh, looking forward to seeing how this deck plays. We will be investigating using Carolyn's uh, base skill values as well as St. Hubert's Key, uh, falling back on working a hunch if there's a, a high shroud location we run into, and then we'll be uh, generating resources using Forbidden Knowledge and uh, Healing Horror with Meat Cleaver and Peter Sylvester. And uh, we'll be pumping all of those resources back into the physical training in case we run into enemies, of which there are quite a few. There aren't uh, that many... Uh... No, I'm not using Kenai in, in this particular deck. I'm... Uh, not having played Carolyn before, I'm not too sure which are the best upgrades yet. Uh, I'm uh, just going with uh, Akon Q's recommendations here. Physical training is free, um, this version anyway. So, uh, hello, Doobies. Uh, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Yeah, he's uh, he's got a lot of decks up there, and a lot of them are, are very good. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, giving this one a try. Hopefully, uh, my play can uh, do it justice. We are set up here and ready to go in Octagon. We've got the uh, everything set up. We are here. We uh, as our uh, we drew these two Asylum Halls locations, uh, the Western Patient Wing and the Eastern Patient Wing. I decided to start at the Western one, and it's a two shroud location with zero clues, and it has the response after you defeat a lunatic enemy at this location. We draw a a, a card. Yeah, I've uh, I have a uh, keen eye is a, a card that I I often put in my guardian decks. I find I don't use it all that often because it does get very expensive very quickly. Uh, that probably wouldn't be a problem for this deck, so it may be worth if we uh, if we have time for a second game. I may uh, we'll see how it does, and I may end up swapping it out, uh, swapping it in for uh, for something. The one less experience would be nice as well because then we could change both of our shortcuts uh, uh, shortcuts to Pathfinders. Welcome, uh, Cryo Shark. Glad you could make the uh, the stream today. That's uh, yeah. We are playing where uh, Carolyn is in her old stomping grounds. Now there are some uh, there are going to be some challenges I think here for Carolyn. Uh, the gardens is going to be a difficult location for her to uh, to uh, get that objective, it being a, an agility skill test. So we're going to need to uh, watch out for that one. Peter Sylvester will help a little bit with that, but we're going to definitely probably need uh, some skills to pass that. Uh, I believe some of the patient confinement uh, locations, there's one there that has a combat skill test. So... Hopefully, uh, by the time we do get down and we're looking for Daniel Chesterfield, we'll be able to uh, to pump our uh, combat high enough in order to uh, to beat that to, to beat that. And uh, yeah, so it, lots of interesting ideas here for uh, for Carolyn. It sounds like uh, having not built a deck with Carolyn, it sounds like there's a lot of different ways you can go because she does have. Uh, 
very interesting deck building requirements, being able to draw on both the Mystics, so you could go the spell route, or uh, and she's also got Seekers, so you can uh, do lots of interesting things there, and of course her, her, her Guardians. So, uh, yeah, training is not a guarantee, so we'll have to see how we do here. And, uh, and uh, let's get to it, I think. We need to draw, because we have nine experience points, we need just one weakness this time instead of two. Let's see what we get. We are going to have Amnesia. Good old classic from the core set will be our weakness for this game. So that will uh, gut our hand if we're not too careful. Uh, sometimes you just can't avoid it though, so we'll have to, uh, to see how we do. Let's uh, draw our opening hand and see what we've got. We are, we are looking for assets if we can get them. So according to uh, Aken Q's uh, play, uh, play advice on his, uh, his write-up for his deck over at Arkham DB, which uh, I am thinking I should link in the uh, chat just uh, for everybody. So I have uh, linked the deck in chat there if you uh, want to take it, uh, take a look at it. Akan Q has uh, some uh, piloting piloting instructions there. It's always nice when deck builders include uh, include a few lines about how they would play the deck. Uh, it certainly helps a player like myself who is just picking up a deck for the first time and uh, taking it for a spin. It also has some uh, advice on upgrading uh, the deck, uh, including uh, physical training, Peter Sylvester, Pathfinder, all of which we have, and he also suggests uh, including uh, Death uh, 13, replacing St. Hubert's Key. That is the uh, tarot card that gives you plus one intellect and uh, forewarned the uh, Seeker uh, card that will uh, cancel a treachery if you have a clue. Or I believe it's if you drop a clue. You've got to drop a clue in order to play it. Uh, just a reminder for all the people who... Uh, lots of new faces here in the uh, chat today. Happy to see you. If you haven't already done so, make sure that you head over to uh, my uh, Facebook page and uh, check it out uh, just in case. That's where I, I do announce streams and uh, whatnot. So if you want to stay uh, in abreast of what's, uh, what's going on, uh, you can always check it out there. If this will work. There we go. All right, and of course you can check me out on uh, YouTube as well. That's where most of my stuff is. I'm also hosting stuff over at twitch.com. So if you haven't done so already, head over there and uh, follow me. Uh, I am planning on doing some other streaming of other games uh, in the future. Uh, one in particular, The Sinking City, is coming out next week. It is a Lovecraft themed investigation game and I'm going to be doing some streaming of that game. So if you're interested, uh, make sure that uh, you uh, uh, head over to uh, twitch.com and, uh, and uh, follow me there because that's, that, uh, that's where that stream will be hosted if you're interested. Uh, what else do we have here? I'm drawing my opening hand. So we're gonna pitch the Warder Protection uh, we'll get rid of the shortcut and the uh, Eureka. So we're, we're mulliganing for four. There's a working the hunch. Two working the hunch. That's not... Oh, geez. What a terrible hand this is. Oh, it happened to me again. I, I uh, mulligan a bunch of cards and then end up, I end up drawing most of them back. So uh, Akan Q recommends having a lot of assets in your hand and we just have one. Uh, we just have the Pathfinder. We've got two working a hunch of word of protection and to take the initiative. Really, uh, really atrocious hand uh, to start off this uh, scenario. And this scenario is pretty unforgiving. Uh, the uh, You need to be fast in this one, so uh, we're not going to have a lot of time to draw that... Uh, uh, we're not going to have a lot of time to draw stuff and uh, to get that down. So, but but then again, I have beat this scenario by playing almost no assets because uh, 
straight jacket and corrosion are such a threat. Yeah, I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, to streaming sinking si sinking cities, and uh, I'm also going to probably uh, pick up Call of Cthulhu. That one came out earlier this year, but I haven't had a chance to play it yet. Uh, that's certainly a fair game for uh, streams. I've had to do some. Uh, I had to pick up a new monitor in order to uh, stream that stuff. So uh, I am looking forward to uh, to bringing that to to you as well going forward. Yeah, the hand is awful, crazy gamer. There's a we've got a ward of protection that will protect us from corrosion and straitjacket, but uh, we don't have a whole lot else. So I might as well let's start this off. We'll take our three actions. Let's uh, we might as well get the pathfinder down. That's about as the best thing we got in our hand. So that will give us a, as long as we're not engaged with an enemy, we can exhaust Pathfinder and move to a connecting location. So we will do that now. Uh, we will move to the Asylum Hall's uh, Eastern Patient Wing. It is a three shroud location with zero clues and we can take a horror to automatically evade a lunatic enemy at our location. No lunatic enemies to speak of. Uh, no clues to speak of either. I don't think this has uh, ever happened to me in this scenario where I've drawn both of the uh, patient wings without clues. So we're just going to have to keep on going. I think we'll head up to the yard. Uh, we can get into the yard. Yes, we can. It is not locked. All right, the yard is a one shroud location with one clue. While you are investigating the yard, it gets plus one shroud for each horror on you. If there are no clues on the yard, take one damage. Remember that you incited a fight amongst the patients. Yeah, it's uh, I've only played her once and it's an, I recognize the hand is terrible. So uh, I can't imagine how you must feel, crazy gamer. Uh, okay, well, we have one action remaining. We might as well investigate. We're going four versus one. Chaos bag says zero, so we do grab a clue. So we do get a clue out of the deal. Uh, next turn, we can take a damage to incite a fight and uh, get some of these objectives uh, on the table. And the hand doesn't get any better. We draw another copy of Take the Initiative. So uh, we have all the initiative in the world, but uh, no assets, which is uh, not very good. All right, well, we will have to go to the Mythos phase. And we add a Doom, and we draw our first encounter card. It's Ooze and Filth. Each uh, location gets plus one shroud at the end of the round. Discard Ooze and Filth. Uh, Ooze and Filth has always... Uh, uh, one of those cards that I've always thought when they, when they release the uh, Path to Carcosa... or Sorry, Return to the Path to Carcosa expansion, which has already been announced. Uh, that is one of the cards that will probably be... Uh, uh, removed from the decks and replaced with something a little uh, with a little more bite uh, adding plus one shroud to a locate to all locations in play uh, doesn't really affect the game uh, all that much considering uh, most uh, investigators have enough intellect to easily uh, deal with those locations so I expect that one to be replaced by something else we are at the yard. Uh, if there are no clues, we can take a damage to incite a fight. So let's do that as our first action. So we incite the fight. So we will mark this so we know that we have achieved one of our objectives. We can use our Pathfinder to move back to this, the, uh, the Eastern Patient Wing. We can use another uh, action to move to the mess hall. It's a two shroud location with two clues. After we successfully investigate the mess hall, we choose and discard a card from our hand. Uh, so this is an interesting option here. We do have the working a hunch, which could get us around one of the uh, one of these uh, location or one of these clues. Uh, I think I am going to play one of them. 
So we will go fast and discover a clue here. And then we will investigate. Uh, so we are going four versus two as our final action. Uh, we need to, oh, there's our first tentacle of the game. So uh, we've uh, made two pulls and we are one tentacle uh, in already. So uh, we don't have to choose and discard a card, fortunately, but we just, uh, we don't, uh, our tempo takes a hit there. All right, we go to, oh, there's an asset. All right, we've got Peter Sylvester and uh, a good asset to see. So we're probably gonna have to gain a resource uh, on our next turn here to, uh, to put Peter into play. Yes, it is, uh, it is tentacle time, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it was Shroud 3, actually. I did forget about that, but it uh, it uh, didn't matter in the end with the tentacle. All right, uh, we need, I guess that was upkeep. Uh, Mythos phase. We are two of two, so we are advancing. This is when all the lunatics show up, so we shuffle the encounter discard pile and each uh, set aside lunatic into the encounter deck. Now, are these the monsters or the lunatics? Those are the monsters, okay. These are the lunatics. Yes, they are, okay. So we'll shuffle all those into the encounter deck and the encounter deck discard pile. And we must randomly choose an enemy from beneath the set aside monsters and place it beneath the act deck. So we will shuffle that up again. Throw that underneath the act deck. And that's going to be our turn. Or that will be the... Uh... So we are in Agenda 2A, Torturous Descent 7, uh, Doom Threshold. Yeah, Cryo Shark, you haven't... Uh... I tend to draw a lot of tentacles, so it uh, it may uh, it may get you drunk here if you if you watch long enough. It uh, usually toward the end, if if uh, if I uh, keep to my my past records, there'll be a tentacle right at the end there, which will uh, cut me off at the knees. Uh, we need to draw an encounter card, which is going to be there's our first lunatic. It's a mad patient. Uh, it's going to show up at the nearest Asylum Halls, so it will be here. Uh, we are going to need some way of killing that thing. Or getting past it. Getting past it is going to be tough. Killing it will be slightly easier. Okay, so no, uh, nothing to really worry about there. Again, our three actions. So we need to investigate. Uh, actually, we we do need to get a resource first. Then we're going to play Peter. So we will have Peter in play. And our agility and our willpower go up. So we're 4, 4, 2, 3 right now. And we need to investigate this location and we can discard a card. I think one of the take the initiatives will go. Uh, we have no other shroud, so it's just a four versus two. Chaos bag says a skull. That will be a minus one, so we do succeed. So we gain a clue and we pitch the take the initiative due to the forced effect on the mess hall. Now we can advance the act deck if we wish. We've got three clues. I don't think there's any reason not to, so we will do that now. All right, we need two. The investigators must decide, choose one. An investigator tests for combat to intimidate the nurse into giving us the keys 
or for agility, neither of those are good for us, or we go for intellect to persuade her. I think we're gonna persuade her. So that's not great for us. We probably could have waited uh, because we could have used that take the initiative, but this is just a standalone. So uh, I don't think the keys are that important. So we'll just go four versus four. Chaos bag gives us an elder sign. Hey, so we pass. Uh, that is a plus one and me, we may heal a horror, but uh, we have no, we have taken no horror. So we do manage to persuade the nurse to give us the keys and uh, we advance to act 2A. Which is the really bad ones, version 2. So now we can ignore the text on the unrevealed side of Arkham Asylum locations. We need to find the patient confinement location with Daniel Chesterfield. Uh, we will be instructed when to advance. Hello, Chris Collins. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it today. We are playing Carolyn Fern in her stomping grounds uh, of Arkham Asylum in the Unspeakable Oath. We just advanced to uh, Act 2A. This is the Really Bad Ones version 2. This is the enemy version of Daniel Chesterfield, or at least what's left of him. Uh, chances are we're probably not going to be killing Daniel, but uh, you never know. We may have time. That will be our, uh, that's the investigation phase. So we will go to the enemy phase. Nothing happens that uh, that uh, mad uh, patient isn't going anywhere. And we draw a forbidden knowledge during the upkeep phase. So that's, uh, that will give us some more resources. I would prefer to see, uh, to see a weapon at this point because we do have an enemy out there to deal with. So that will, uh, but we can uh, take some horror and gain some resources here. That's actually quite nice for resource generation. So we add a doom. We are at one of seven. Our encounter card is going to be whispers in our head. That's uh, dismay, peril hidden. We had to add it to our hand. We cannot commit skill cards to skill tests. Yeah, I know Carolyn doesn't kill well. I can I can see that. That's going to be rough. Uh, she doesn't evade well either, so we're going to have to try to find that meat cleaver before we get anywhere. Well, we can uh, we can't play skill cards. We can play a forbidden knowledge though. Let's do that now. It has four secrets. So we can exhaust forbidden knowledge and take a horror, which we will place on uh, Peter. And we move one secret from forbidden knowledge to our resource pool. Now, Peter, when our turn ends, we heal a horror and then we will gain another resource. All right, sounds good. Okay, we are going to go to the kitchen, I think, is the next stop on our journey through the asylum. Uh, we don't have to take an action to do that. We can uh, use our Pathfinder to get there. Pathfinder has already saved us a bunch of actions worth its weight in gold, that card. The kitchen is a two-shroud location with uh, one clue. Um, two shroud location, one clue. If there are no clues, we test two willpower. If we succeed, we remember we set a fire to the kitchen. Let's uh, investigate. We are going four versus two. Chaos bed gives us a minus two, so we do succeed. So we grab that clue. Now we can set a fire in the kitchen if we want. Let us do that. We are going to go, because we have Peter in play, we are going four versus two. I, if I remember correctly, the chaos bag in this one uh, is not bad. So we'll just go four versus two. We get a minus one, so we do set fire to the kitchen. 
So we have completed two of the objectives. And it is the end of our turn. So at the end of our turn, we get to heal a horror from Peter and we gain another resource because of, the, uh, because of Carolyn's special ability. Uh, nothing in the enemy phase. There is the enchanted blade. Okay, we've got a weapon. That will be very helpful. And we've got the resources to play it. So we can get this down. We can get up to plus two combat and plus one damage. So uh, that might be enough to take out the mad patient uh, with the chaos bag being uh, such as it is. Uh, so that's going to be it for this turn. We add a doom to torturous descent. We are at two of seven. Encounter card is going to be walls closing in. Test uh, willpower X, where X is the shroud value of your location. If you fail, you must either take one horror for each point you fail by, or randomly choose one enemy from the among set-aside monster enemies and place them beneath the act deck. Uh, I think we probably want as few monster enemies as we can, just because the uh, Carolyn can't kill them that easily, so we will want to pass this. Uh, we can't play skills though, so that's not going to work for us. We're just going to go four versus two. Uh, shroud value is two, so four versus two. We get a skull, that will be a minus one, so we do uh, pass this uh, fairly easily. Yeah, Chris, uh, this is probably one of my uh, all-time favorite scenarios that has been uh, released for the game. Uh, I've always had some very tense games against uh, the Unspeakable Oath. I love how the map, I love the map. It does really feel like an asylum uh, when you're playing through this. So we can take a free triggered ability. We get our three actions. We can take a free triggered ability to move a resource, uh, not a clue, a resource, and take a horror on Peter. We can use an action to play the Enchanted Blade. Hi, Plutter Cal. Glad you could make the stream today. Uh, has anything cool happened? Well, we're playing uh, Carolyn Fern in the Unspeakable Oath. We've drawn uh, one tentacle so far, and we've got one enemy on the table. Other than that, uh, not a whole lot has happened. We are still waiting. Uh, we do have a, a weapon now, though, so we do have a chance to kill this... Uh, to kill the mad patient. So we are going to... That was our first action. We need to Pathfinder over. We've got two actions remaining. Uh, let's get rid of this uh, Whispers in your head because I don't want it anymore. We have the take the initiative, which we may need to play uh, when we attack this uh, this mad patient. So it's the end of our turn. We will heal a horror from Peter and gain a resource with Carolyn's special ability. We go to upkeep. There is uh, hypnotic therapy. That is uh, Carolyn's signature asset. It's an asset. Uh, we can exhaust it to... If we succeed, we heal a horror from an investigator. Then we can draw a card. After one of your other effects heals horror from an investigator, exhaust hypnotic therapy. That effect heals an additional horror. Okay, well, uh, probably going to commit that to a skill test. Yeah, this is a taboo. Uh, this is a taboo list, so it uh, does not include uh, machete for sure. Enchanted Blade is pretty good, though. Uh, you know, and it does have limited charges, but uh, we can, uh, if we just, if we don't need to kill that many things, we can, uh, we can get by. All right, we go to the Mythos phase. Three of seven, we draw. There is the straight jacket. That's, uh, that's a cancel. Let us cancel that. No, not happening. We will add a Doom to Peter. And we'll just get rid of that. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Uh oh. How did that happen? Uh oh. I am not too sure how to fix that. Uh, dear. Whoa. How do I fix this? Uh, nah. So my screen has gone all wonky here. Uh, she can include level one weapons in her deck. She can't include anything above level one. So uh, she can include things like meat cleaver and uh, I'm just checking to see how I move my screen uh, screen back here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Oh, that's maybe what I need here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. I need to move my screen. How do I do that? Moves game board. Space bar, left click, drag. Okay. Hey, look at that. No, I got it. We figured it out. Thanks to the Octagon's handy uh, help function, we do figure out how to get us back to... Uh, all right, we are at, uh, we've got our three actions. We are going to go kill this thing. Uh, we will use our um, Pathfinder to Pathfinder in. We will engage the Mad Patient. Now, when we attack the mad patient, we take a horror. Yeah, it did uh, the hotkey uh, the hotkey guide actually told me. I, I typically this is the first time it's happened on this particular machine. I know how to fix it on my laptop, but uh, not on this one. So we've got uh, we need to kill this mad patient. Now we can use our take the initiative because we haven't taken an action yet. So that would give us three. So if we use the enchanted blade, we empower it up. We're going to take a horror. We can put that on Peter. Uh, we power up the enchanted blade. So we go four, uh, five, six, seven, because this is yeah, for each action that's been completed. So we are at seven versus two. So that should be plenty. We get a zero. All right, so we kill, we get the plus one damage. So we do end up killing this guy in one shot. Nice. That was our first action. Second action, we will go here. Third action, we will go to the basement. Basement is a four shroud location with one clue. And after we put to, after the basement hall is revealed, we put the four set aside patient confinement locations into play. So I have those hidden over here. Hi Ben, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. We uh, just entered the basement of uh, the unspeakable oath with uh, Carolyn Fern. So we have the patient uh, confinement locations in there, shuffled up. We need this clue. We've got to, we've only got one other clue. And uh, we need to spend a clue to move to the patient confinement. So I am going to, I think I'm going to play, we have one action remaining. So, or we have no actions, but we do have a working the hunch we can use to grab this clue. Uh, I'm 
Just going to pause for a second here. Let's take another look at the deck just uh, for people who are joining the stream. This is uh, Carolyn Fern, Athletic Psychologist. There's uh, Meat Cleaver, St. Hubert's Key, Peter Sylvester II, and uh, Enchanted Blade, Forbidden Knowledge, uh, Pathfinder, and Physical Training II. And then for events, we've got Logical Reasoning, Shortcut, Water Protection, and Working a Hunch, and Skills are Eureka, Inquiring Mind, Steadfast, and Take the Initiative. This deck was built by uh, Akam Q over at Arkham DB, one of Arkham DB's uh, prolific deck builders. Lots of solo decks over there. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, uh, make sure you check them out. We are back to the game. Uh, that is the end of our turn, so we will heal a horror and gain a resource with with uh, Carolyn's special ability. Uh, nothing in the invest uh, nothing in the enemy phase we draw another enchanted blade okay so we've got another weapon hi Kurt uh, welcome to the stream glad you could make it today all the way from Switzerland happy to have you uh, we are playing Carolyn Fern through the unspeakable oath we uh, just completed uh, turn six so we are moving on to turn seven uh, we add a Doom to Torturous Descent. That is four of seven. Our encounter card is going to be the Young Psychopath. Young Psychopath, of course, is a 2-2-3. Two, two, Humanoid Lunatic, and after she engages you, we must either take a Horror or Young Psychopath gets plus three fight. That's, uh, that's an easy uh, choice for us. Uh, we will just add a Horror to uh, Peter Sylvester. I've actually done pretty well in this scenario playing true solo. I, I sort of prefer playing true solo um, just because it's slightly easier to do an octagon. There's less switching around you've got to do. And I find when I play two-handed, it's uh, I'm often, I don't play optimally. Uh, I don't play as well as I probably could have because I'm missing, uh, missing uh, potential plays I could make with... Uh, between the two investigators cooperating it's hard to keep track of both hands so uh, sometimes i forget okay you know investigator x is taking an action and investigator y has a card that he could commit to that action sometimes i realize you know a few turns too late that uh, that would have been a great uh, a great play to make i uh, do have plans however to play two-handed uh, streaming uh, coming up here in in a stream or two so uh, stay tuned for that I have uh, something special planned and uh, we're gonna have some fun with that uh, with some two-handed play here uh, coming up we've got a young psychopath to deal with taking the horror is no big deal we will want to kill her so we are gonna have to exhaust our enchanted blade and spend another resource or another uh, charge so we're going four versus two chaos bag says minus one so we do kill the young psychopath in one shot that is our first action Yeah, it, you can, it does open up deck building. I mean, the more players you add, the more you get to specialize. So you, like when you're playing true solo, you can't really specialize your deck all that much. So there are certain cards that I tend not to play because they just don't uh, work particularly well when you're playing two solo. iWitch.com, welcome to the... Uh... No, I wouldn't... Uh, I don't have Tabletop Simulator. I've never used Tabletop Simulator. Uh, two-handed does work pretty well in octagon it's just a matter of, of you've got to load two instances of it and switch back uh, back and forth between the hands that's more that's more the issue than uh, anything else it's not that uh, not too bad it's just I don't feel like I play very well that's the the biggest issue uh, we can move to one of these locations so we can uh, we'll use our pathfinder to do that so we'll spend a clue might as well just go to number one Number one is, uh, well, look who's here. It's uh, Daniel. After patient confinement is revealed, advance to Act 2B. 
So we find Daniel on the first attempt. This is Act 2B, Daniel's warning. Spawn the set-aside Daniel Chesterfield enemy face up at patient confinement. Uh, why am I exhausting my enchanted blade? I don't have to do that. Uh, so we, he spawns. So we have a big enemy to deal with now. All right. And we also, no, we just uh, do that. So with or without Daniel, we've got to get out of this place. If the investigators have performed four of the following, you must advance. We need to know the guards patrol, set a fire in the kitchen, incite a fight amongst the patients, release a dangerous patient, recall the way out or distract the guards. We've done two of those so far. There are a couple more hidden in the patient confinement uh, confinement areas, uh, but we need to deal with Daniel first. Killing him is going to be, I don't know, we've got one charge left, I believe, on our, uh, one charge left on our enchanted blade, so that is not going to really help us out. Uh, we could try to evade him. We've got three, uh, We've got three agility with uh, Peter in play. If we take a couple actions to evade him, there is one clue here too. So potentially we could get hung up uh, trying to evade Daniel. If we don't grab this clue, then we end up, uh, I believe one of the patient confinement doesn't have clues. Uh, so we will need to grab, do we want to stick around and grab this clue? Probably not because we need to evade him twice. That's going to be tricky. Well, we're just going to have to evade him. 3-3, three, three, that's not great. Chaos Bag gives us a skull. That's a minus one. And if we fail, we randomly choose an enemy from the set-aside monsters and spawn it beneath the act deck. That's bad news. All right, so that was doubly bad. Um, I guess our other option would be, yeah, in the no would be useful here. Uh, our other option is we attack Daniel. What's our attack like? Four versus three. Uh, we hit him, then we have to take two attacks of opportunity to get the next enchanted blade down, and then we kill him. Uh, yes, we're going to do that, I think. So we will use our enchanted blade. We'll power it up. So we're going to go four versus three. Not great odds, but the chaos bag gives us a minus three, so that uh, failed as well. Yikes. Okay, we've run into a problem. Let's see if we can get out of it. So we go to the enemy phase. Daniel attacks us for a damage and a horror. We will, actually during the end of our turn, we'll heal a horror off Peter so we gain a resource. So uh, resources are certainly not, uh, not Carolyn's problem. We go to the upkeep, we draw a ward of protection. So that is not gonna help us with our Daniel problem. Five of seven doom in play, we will draw an encounter card, which is going to be another straight jacket. Yikes, uh, that's a cancel. Uh, so we will cancel that with the ward of protection we just drew. Take another horror. Thanks for dropping by, Crazy Gamer. Make sure you check out the uh, the full video on uh, YouTube or Twitch when uh, uh, later. So we've added a horror to Peter to play our uh, our um, word of protection. So now things get nasty. We've got to we've got to take an attack of opportunity to get another enchanted blade down. Uh, we're okay as far as slots go. 
No, not a clue. Uh, we need then to attack twice. Uh, yeah, we're going to attack. Uh, we commit the uh, two. Yeah, we're going to go five versus three. Chaos bag says zero. So we deal two damage to Daniel. We've got one action remaining. Let's do it again. Four versus three. Chaos bag says, ah, minus two. Damn it. Okay, so we're going to take another attack. We're going to heal, gain a resource, take another attack. Uh, this could be the end of us here if we can't uh, get away. If we can't kill Daniel, uh, this could be a, a, our tomb here. We draw, Oh, that's good. That is very, very nice pull for our upkeep phase. We... Uh, we draw the uh, inquiring mind. That will really, uh, that will really save us. A, uh, might just save our bacon. Six of seven doom in play, and we draw another enemy. Shoot. And we've got to take a horror, or she gets plus three. Peter is uh, earning his bucks here. Uh, fortunately, we do the uh, Enchanted Blade is still a plus one, so that might help us against the... Uh, yeah, Doobies, that's an awesome draw. <laughs> an amazing draw. Uh, we can probably kill both of these, uh, I'm hoping. First action, we will try to kill uh, Daniel. So we will empower the blade, commit the inquiring mind. So we are going seven versus three. Like those odds, Chaos Bag gives us a minus one. So Daniel does go down. We add him to the victory display. Very nice. Glad to see that uh, inquiring mind. Although the minus one, I think we would have been okay regardless. We need to kill the uh, this uh, young psychopath as well. We will use our enchanted blade. So we're just going three versus two. Not great odds, but uh, ooh, minus four. That hurts. And we will try it again. Minus one. So we do hit once. Uh, we will heal. Gain a resource. Man, I want that uh, physical training down now. So maybe Kina, you know, Crazy Gamer had suggested using Kina, and maybe that's a good, uh, that is a definitely a good sub out, because we would have it in play right now, and it would be, uh, it would, uh, we would be able to commit all of these resources that we've got, uh, 10 resources, tons, uh, to, uh, so we are going to take, what is this, uh, do one and one. Uh, so we are going to go to the enemy phase. We're going to have to take a damage and a horror. Go to upkeep. There is amnesia. That You can't ask for anything better than that. I'll choose and discard all but one card from my hand. So our weakness just whiffs uh, completely, thankfully. Seven of seven, we are advancing. We are advancing to Agenda 2B, the yellow sign. The lead investigator must randomly choose an enemy from among the set-aside monster enemies and shuffle it into the encounter deck without looking at it. If Constance Dumain is not listed under VIP Slain, we search the collection and spawn her in the garden. I happen to have her right here. Constance Dumain shows up. Uh, good thing she is incredibly easy to evade. Uh, yeah, some luck. I've got a little bit of luck going on my, my side here, Cryoshark. Uh, we need... Oh, we need one of these enemies. There are just two of them. So we'll just draw a random number. Let's see. Uh, random number between one and two. It will be number two. So this one here. 
Shuffle that into the encounter deck. Well, so far I'm glad that we drew our uh, we drew our wards of protection at the right time to cancel the uh, to cancel those straight jackets. We still have corrosion to worry about though, which which could be an issue if it uh, corrodes all of our enchanted blades and leaves us without a weapon. We are in Agenda 3A, his domain. Flee, flee while you still can. When you would place an enemy beneath the act deck, we shuffle it into the encounter deck instead. We've got eight rounds to get out of here. We still need to find two of the objectives. Uh, we can, one is at the garden, and we will need one other one. So if we go, we'll need to find one probably in the patient confinement area. So we gain our three actions, but have we, did we draw an encounter card? I do not think we did. No, we did not. Okay. Descent into madness surge. If you have at least three horror, we lose an action. We Oh, we do have three horror. Look at that. So we lose an action this turn. And that surges into a mad patient. Okay, now things are getting getting a few too many enemies on the table and uh, what I would give uh, I should have I would have if I was really wanting to cheat this scenario, I would have put astral projection in, but uh I'm not playing that in this deck, so I can't just zip to the uh, to the yard or the garden. I have two actions. I need to kill the young psychopath first with the enchanted blade. We're going three versus two. First action, chaos bag says an elder sign. Okay, so we get to heal a horror too. So we kill the young psychopath. Uh, we heal a horror because it's Carolyn's ability. We gain a resource. Uh, we can. Uh, do we grab this clue? It's a good question. If we grab this clue, we can Pathfinder back. Yeah, I think we do need this clue, just in case. So we're going to go four versus two. Chaos Bag gives us a minus one. So we grab that clue, then we Pathfinder back to the basement. Yeah, Elusive is stupidly good in this scenario. It's uh, like Elusive, Astral Projection, any of those cards that, that give you extra movement. I mean, Pathfinder has been doing tons of work as well. I mean, it saved me... I don't know, three, four, or five actions so far. So it's uh, any of those movement cards are, are amazing in this uh, particular scenario. Yeah, lightning gun. It's uh, end of our turn. We will heal. We'll gain. Wow, we're just rolling in resources here. Enemy phase. Constance is a hunter, so she will move. Uh, upkeep, we draw a logical reasoning. Now we could heal. Heal to horror. That's not really worth an action at this point though. So we will go to the mythos phase. One out of eight. Our encounter card is going to be Gift of Madness, Peril Hidden. We add it to our hand. We cannot trigger action abilities on locations. That's a bit of a problem. Because we need to trigger action abilities on locations in order to beat this scenario. So we will have to get rid of that. Now, when you would place an enemy beneath the act deck, we shuffle it into the encounter deck. 
randomly choose an enemy from the set aside enemies and place it beneath the act deck. So we have to take an action to get rid of Gift of Madness. We shuffle one of these guys into the encounter deck. So there are two two monsters in there now. We will spend a clue and Pathfinder over to this one. This patient confinement cell, two shroud location with one clue. It is, oh, it's a good one for a Carolyn too. Awesome. Uh, test X willpower, where X is the amount of horror on you. If you succeed, you recognize the room. Remember that you called the, recalled the way out. We don't even need this clue here, so we can just do this. Uh... Now, X is the amount of horror on you. We have two horror, so it's a four versus two skill test. That's pretty good. Let's do that now. Four versus two. Chaos bag says minus one, so we succeed. So we will add a thing here. Now, we have three of the four. The fourth can be the garden. The garden, though, is an agility skill test. <clears throat> it's only two, though. But we can't do it if there are enemies there, so that's going to be tricky as far as timing goes. Uh, let's, uh, we can actually use our Forbidden Knowledge as a free triggered ability to gain a resource and add a, that uh, horror to Peter. 15 resources. Wow, wow, wow. Really impressed with Carolyn's resource generation, that's for sure. Uh, so we will move back to the basement. And we will end our turn, so we will heal, gain a resource, and that will be that. Enemy phase, Constance continues her slow journey toward us. Now, Constance will kill us. That is a problem. If she hits us, she kills us, so we need to get through her before we can do anything. Fortunately, she's a one evade, so that's pretty good. All right, we get an unexpected courage. That is very helpful. We will need that. If we can get past Constance. Okay, how do we do that, though? That's the trick. Uh, Constance is going to move here next turn. We pathfind her in. We evade her. We kill the mad patient. We move. And then it's just a straight shot to the, the garden. All right, can be done. We add a doom, two of eight. Our encounter card is a maniac. That is not good. And after the Maniac engages you, take one damage. So Peter goes down because we will die otherwise. That is a very unfortunate draw. Uh, yeah, that is a bad one. How do we do that? So we may not, we, okay, how do we, so he's gonna take a damage. Can we get out of this? That's the question. All right, we can evade, we can evade. We have three actions. So evade, pathfinder gives us two actions. No. No, I think that Maniac might have sealed our doom here. Took a little bit too much damage during that fight with Daniel, and now we are stuck because we cannot 
We cannot take an, an attack of opportunity. So if we uh, if we move, yeah. If we, all we can do is evade, move, then we engage the other guy, then we okay. That puts us at two. We pathfinder. That gives us two actions. We evade and then move back. Okay, that's what we got to. Uh, Eastern wing, uh, no it doesn't because we were a short in action, that's the problem. But I think what we can do, if we evade this guy, Hi, Marco. Welcome to the stream. Uh, if we move, uh, sorry, if we evade this maniac, we pathfinder up to mad patient. We evade the mad patient. Or we kill the mad, no, we can't kill the mad patient, unfortunately. We evade the mad patient. Then we move to the infirmary. That gives us another turn. But a lot of stuff has to go right. All right, so we know what we've got to do. We've got to get to the infirmary. So we're going to go three versus one. Uh, I got to save that unexpected courage for another, for the other evade. So we're really at the mercy of the chaos bag here. So we'll just see what happens. Chaos bag gives us a minus four. So that uh, nothing we could do there. Uh, we could have committed the unexpected courage, but then we would have been at the mercy of the chaos bag with the mad patient. So that will seal the deal, unfortunately. Uh, one pull from the chaos bag leaves us without any options. So we can evade this guy again. Uh, yeah, we can't kill him because we don't have any bonus damage. Um, yeah, we just, we used all of our enchanted blade. Man, that's too bad. We had a good plan and then we just drew the wrong enemy. Well, we draw an Elder Sign as our second uh, action. So we do evade this guy and we get to heal a horror and gain a resource. Look at all those resources going to waste. Uh, and then we could move and uh, we'd be dead because we just don't have the, uh, we're gonna die. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, well, we tried. We, uh, I think we had the victory. The victory was, uh, was close. Uh, we just uh, took a little bit too much damage. Can you get to the east wing from the basement? Oh, you can. I didn't even know that. Okay, well, let's, uh, because that... I did not realize that. Doobies. Because that changes things. Okay, because we can automatically evade a lunatic, and she's a lunatic. So we can path. So we did evade. We can pathfinder up. She will engage us. And then we automatically evade her. Yeah, Doovies is the hero of the game. Gold star for Doovies here. Wow, that was. I've always thought you can't move to the base from the basement to the from the, to the eastern wing. Wow, good catch. So we uh, we 
Take a horror to evade, automatically evade a lunatic. Yeah, I will take a horror for that, for sure. So we automatically evade Constance. And she will be here. So that will be our turn. We're still not out of the woods. Uh, we go to the enemy phase. Nothing happens. We go to upkeep. We draw another unexpected courage. Good stuff. Oh, doovies. I'm buying you a beer if I ever meet you. Uh, so she will engage us. But we can take an action to automatically evade her again. Did I take, I did add a horror, okay. And then we just need to move, move. Uh, we might be able to do this. All right, uh, we need to go to the mythos phase. Three of eight. We get a yellow sign, okay. That's a four versus four. And if we fail, we take two horror and search our deck for a madness weakness. I'm going to use this uh, logical reasoning to go six. Oh, no, we're at, uh, we lost Peter, so we're only at five versus four. And our agility dropped as well. That's uh, bad news. But uh, better than losing the game. Uh, test four willpower. So we are at five versus four. All right, Let's see what the chaos bag says. Minus four, no help there. So we are gonna take two horror. And we've got to search our deck for a madness weakness. I'm not sure if uh, Carolyn's is a madness. No, it's just a flaw. So we don't have any madness weaknesses in our deck, so that's fine. So we just ended up taking the two horror there. We get three actions. We use one action to automatically evade Constance taking a horror. Five of nine. We will go Pathfinder. Uh, I keep wanting to take actions for Pathfinder. So we will move there. Hi Charles, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it today. We will move to the garden. Garden is a three shroud location with one clue. If there are no clues on the garden, test two agility. If you succeed, remember that you've distracted the guards. So we need to grab a clue. We are going four versus three. I can only commit one unexpected courage to this, so we're going to use one here. Uh, four versus three, one action. So once I trigger this, I want to resign the same turn. So next turn. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep it. We're going to go four versus three. Chaos Bag says... Minus one, so we grab the clue. That'll be our final action. So evade, pathfinder, move. Okay, we're good. Go to the enemy phase, nothing happens. We go to, we draw a Eureka. Okay, that's another agility skill icon. That is very helpful. Four of eight. Encounter card. Oh no. So close. Oh. Because I don't think we can. Uh, I. Oh, maybe. We'd need to evade it possible. Do we take a horror if we evade this thing? Yeah. Okay, we're still in it. 
still we're not dead yet that's a terrible draw but we're not dead yet uh ch -ch -ch, three actions so we need to evade the spawn of holly So we go four, ver we are th two versus two. We can go four versus two. Chaos Bag says, Skull, that's a minus one. So we succeed in evading the spawn, but we take a horror, that's fine. So we evade him, whoa. All right, uh, how did I do that? There we go. So first action, we evade him. Now we need to pass this agility two skill test. We will commit our other unexpected courage and our Eureka to go two, three, four, five versus two. Chaos bag gives us a minus one. So we add our, uh, we add, so we've got our four. We've cleared the garden, the yard, the kitchen, and the confinement area, so we advance. Okay, shuffle the encounter deck. Shuffle the encounter discard pile and each enemy beneath the act deck into the encounter deck. There is only one enemy. So he gets shuffled in. Uh, if at least three monster enemies were shuffled into the encounter deck by this effect, the investigator with the lowest willpower discards. So we only shuffled one, so that's fine. So we advance to act 4A, no asylum. We ignore the text on unrevealed location. The gardens gains, if there are no ready enemies at the garden, resign, finally a way out. Each of, if we, each if each undefeated investigator resigns, we advance. We have one action remaining and we will resign. Doovies, that victory is for you. You earned that one. And I learned something today. I didn't realize the basement and the uh, is connected to both asylum halls. Whew! What an ending. We draw the spawn of Holly, but we uh, managed to evade it. And we had two actions. We clear the garden and then we, uh, we resign. So that is a uh, one for the victory books. We put up the W. Uh, wouldn't have been able to do it without the stream, so all kudos go to you guys. Uh, fantastic game, always one of my favorite scenarios. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, very impressed with Carol. I mean, if Carolyn had, uh, I need to check Keen Eye because I think Keen Eye is probably a good call here. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it's great to get a great to pull out a victory there. Uh, yeah, Keen Eye give her the give her the attack bonus, so that would be that'd be nice to have out. Uh, oh, cheers to you, Doovies! That was uh, that was fantastic, fantastic call on your part. We we managed to just have enough actions to uh, to pull off the victory. Solo victory through uh, Unspeakable Oath is always nice. We had four of. Uh, Eight doom in play so we still had plenty of time we end the game with 20 resources so uh, yeah Carolyn is a resource generation machine once she gets cards like uh, if she gets Peter on the table and uh, forbidden knowledge and stuff like that uh, the uh, enchanted blades gave us just enough uh, attack in order to uh, to kill what we needed to kill and so that is going to be the game so what would uh, it is 11:22. we have time 
probably to play, um, we could play this one again, or we could play, uh, I'm probably gonna play in Echoes of the Past. I haven't played that one in a while. That one's a little less enemy intensive. More investigation and fewer enemies, so maybe Carolyn can uh, can deal with that one. So I am going to uh, reset, and uh, let's uh, give that one a try. All right. Uh, I would need to. So keen eye is three. I would need to probably pull some cards. Uh, if I pulled, uh, I could pull the Pathfinder and a, well, I could pull both physical trainings and add another Pathfinder. Yeah, we'll pull both train. We'll pull the trainings, and we'll put a keen eye in, and then uh, we will add another pathfinder, and that will bring us back up to nine. I think that is a good call. So let us load our decks up. Oh, it always feels great to to get a victory, uh, especially against a scenario like uh, the Unspeakable Oath. It. Uh, it never feels uh, like a cheap win. Uh, that's a much better hand. Well, at least we've got a meat cleaver. So we will throw all those back in. We'll look at all the cards. We will pull that and that. I'm gonna draw my weakness now, just so I can dump my physical trainings into the. Uh... So our weakness is gonna be chronophobia. Take one direct horror. Well, okay, that's uh, I'm quite happy to do that. We will add a card. And we will add one more card. We will add the second copy of Pathfinder. Good to go. All right. So we'll just get rid of those. All right, we're set up. Love the add the card feature in Octagon so you can just quickly uh, quickly uh, reset everything and make changes if necessary. Uh, let's grab Echoes of the Past. It's been a while since I set this one up, so let's take a look. So one player in the game, no changes are made. So we put the entry hall, quiet halls, and six remaining historical society locations. Okay. Dump shortcut for dynamite. Okay. We'll make another change here. Yeah, we'd have the two Pathfinders. We don't need, uh, probably don't need, whoops. We probably don't need the shortcut. Uh, uh, there's the dynamite. Shortcut goes out. All right. So we have the entry hall, the second floor quiet halls, the third floor quiet halls. Uh, I don't think any of those. Yeah, those uh, seem very like very good uh, good suggestions. We will. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how they they play. Shuffle these up. There's a third floor. A second floor. Uh, we don't need the hidden library. Another third floor. 
That's a third floor, a ground floor, a second floor, second floor, ground floor. Uh, Where's that hidden library? Well, so far, Crazy Gamer, I'm very impressed with uh, Carolyn's resource generation. She does, uh, I mean, killing things is always going to be a struggle for her, but uh, we did manage to do just enough to get through uh, the Unspeakable Oath. So so I think if we get the right draw, we will be uh, okay. And th uh, this scenario, killing things, is not uh, really a requirement. Uh, let's see, we've got our locations... Uh, we've set aside the cards. We don't put anything into play. If there are exactly four players in the game, uh, we don't worry about that. Uh, we didn't flee the dinner party. And we just shuffle the remaining encounter cards and we're ready to go. Okay, so we start here at the entry hall. Entry hall, two shroud location, zero clues, and we can resign from here if necessary. We've drawn our weakness and we've uh, made all the changes to our deck so we can do, uh, we can draw our opening hand. Okay, we got a Peter, a Pathfinder, a Eureka, a Take the Initiative, and an Enchanted Blade. We're obviously keeping Peter, the Pathfinder, and the Enchanted Blade. So these two skills can go. There's a Ward of Protection and our weakness, Chronophobia. That will go away and we will draw an Unexpected Courage. Pretty much better hand than the, than the last game. Considering the opening hand we drew during uh, the Unspeakable Oath, that was uh, the fact that we were able to pull that game out is even more, uh, more surprising. So we will need to generate a bunch of resources. If uh, last game is any indication, we should not have a problem doing that. Uh, let us get, uh, I think we're ready to start here. So we'll gain our three actions. Uh, let's just, uh, so before we start, uh, we've got probably some new people in the stream. So let's just take a quick look at the deck again. So this is the deck that we are playing. It was built by uh, Akan Q over at Arkham DP, one of the uh, very uh, prolific deck builders for uh, solo players. This, uh, so we've made a few changes to this deck uh, since the Unspeakable Oath. We pulled the physical trainings for a copy of Keen Eye. We added a second copy of Pathfinder, removing the shortcut, and. Uh, we have also added a copy of Dynamite uh, to the deck, so if we need to blow anything up, we can uh, we can do that. So uh, let's see how we do in this game. Three actions. I think our first action will be to get Peter Sylvester down. And our second action will be to move over here. We move to the historical museum two shroud location with one clue. You cannot investigate this location or your while investigating this location your uh, intellect cannot be modified. Thank you very much Mark. Welcome to the stream. We will just investigate four versus two. Chaos bag gives us a minus four to start off with. So a rough start there. Oh well. Uh, we add, we draw our signature asset. Uh, uh, hypnotic therapy. Gonna lock the, uh, lock the uh, agenda deck so we don't add doom to it during the mythos phase. And we will go to the Mythos phase. Yeah, well, we uh, I think we only drew one tentacle last game, which is very unusual for me. Uh, our first encounter card is going to be the Fanatic. Uh, not great. Revealed location with most clues. Yeah, he is coming to us. 
Uh, after Fnatic enters play, we move one clue from Fnatic's location to the Fnatic. Now, I believe after one or more clues is placed on an enemy, they become Doom. And when you defeat the Fnatic, we take control of all clues, but we have no clues to take control of now. Fnatic will hit us for a damage. So we're going to need our Enchanted Blade to deal with this chump. So we're going to have to take an Attack of Opportunity to play the Enchanted Blade. He is a three fight, so we are going to be a four. Uh, I'm going to use my unexpected courage on this to go uh, six, three. Minus one, so we kill the fanatic. Okay, and there are no clues remaining. Here, so we've got to go find some clues somewhere. How many clues do we need? Two. Okay, so I guess we're heading back here to the entry hall. Uh, nothing in the enemy phase. We draw Eureka. We go to the Mythos phase. Uh, Eureka might be good. Uh, search top three cards of our deck so we can tutor something up. Locked door. Oh, what a brutal card this is for uh, for uh, Carolyn. This is one of her uh, one of her real weaknesses. Test for uh, for combat or for agility. However, attached to the location with the most clues without a locked door, so uh, we have no clues on the table, so this uh, is really the perfect time to draw that locked door. We can put it on the entry hall, where there will be never there will be never clues there, so we don't have to worry about it. Excellent draw, uh, well timed there. We shall move. Uh, Peter gives us one agility and one willpower. We are at the meeting room historical society meeting room exhaust an ally asset discover a clue at this location as an asset once per as an action once per round sure i can do that so we will gain a clue there so we're going to have to go up a floor to uh to get another clue Nothing during the enemy phase. We draw St. Hubert's Key. Okay, that's that's nice, but uh, it's a bit expensive at the moment. So we are going to not be playing that. I want to get my Pathfinder down here so we can get a little bit more movement going. Looks like we're going to have to move around a little bit more in this uh, scenario. So we do not add a Doom. We draw an Encounter card, which is going to be led astray. We must decide, place one of your clues on an enemy, cultist enemy. We can't do that, or place a doom on the current agenda. So we have to place a doom on the current agenda. So we will unlock it, place a doom, and then lock it back up. So we don't have to add doom. Uh, that doesn't surge or anything. Get our three actions back. Uh, we go up to this quiet halls. Again, uh, it's connected to the second floor locations and uh, zero, zero shroud. So we'll move to this one, second action. This is the Historical Society, Historical Museum, two shroud location with one clue. We uh, cannot modify our intellect. We will just investigate again. Uh, so we will go four versus two. Chaos bag gives us a zero. So we grab another clue. That is enough to advance. So we will spend our two clues. Now we need a passageway, and our passageway is down here. So we will want to uh, head back there eventually. 
Uh, we are on Act 1B, Late Night Studies. For each revealed historical location, add one clue to it. Uh, and uh, so we will go. So we add a clue there, there, and there. And that is all. We need two more clues. Uh, that was our turn. Oh, there is our weakness. Interesting. I have not seen her weakness before. We put it into play in our threat area with four horror on it. Horror on rational thought may be healed as if it were on Carolyn Fern. If there is no horror on it, we discard it. You cannot heal horror from cards other than rational thought. You cannot gain resources from Carolyn Fern's ability. Well, that just shuts us right down, doesn't it? Uh, so can we... Okay. need to read this one again. So it put it into play. We may heal it as if it were on Carolyn Fern. If there is no horror on it, we discard it. You cannot heal horror from cards other than rational thought. So what does this rational ther hypnotic therapy do? We can heal one horror from an investigator at your location. So that counts as Carolyn. And then we may draw a card. After one of your card effects, other card, one of your other card effects. Okay, so we can use ration, we can use it, looks like we can use hypnotic therapy to uh, heal ourselves, heal this horror. We've also got a logical reasoning in our uh, deck that can use, to, can be used to heal to horror. What's the name of the deck on Arkham DB? Well, I can actually, I will just link it to you in the chat so you can check it out. Uh, let me do that for you, Kurt. Yeah, Hypnos, it will clear the, uh, the weakness eventually, so uh, we'll probably want to get that into play. There, I've, uh, I've linked the deck list in chat for you, so you can, uh, you can go check it out, Kurt. It's called, uh, it's Athletic Psychologist. So we've made a couple changes since, uh, since then, but uh, so getting hypnotic therapy down might be worthwhile. Although, yeah, that's going to limit, our, we may not need to actually. It's, this scenario can go pretty quickly. So we'll have to see. Uh, we're on the mythos phase. We uh, draw a card, the King's Edict, for each cultist enemy in play, move one clue to that enemy's location. Uh, no cultists, so it gains Surge. We draw another King's Edict, it gains Surge. We draw a Hunting Shadow, we must either spend one clue or take two horror, well, or two damage, sorry. Uh, nothing we can do about, well, we could actually, we could cancel that. And, ooh, we have taken a damage already. Um, ch -ch -ch. Is it worth canceling that? No, we're not going to cancel that. We'll save it for something better. Uh, we'll just take the two damage. All right, we get our three actions. Uh, I really want to get down. Uh, it may, but there. I, let me see here. For each cultist enemy in play, move one clue until the end of the round. Each cultist enemy gets play and or doom on it. Yeah, so it would stay in play, I think. So all cultists get buffed, but there are no cultists. So. Uh, we don't have to worry about that, uh, fortunately. Uh, will, will Peter's ability trigger the weakness in play? No, I don't think it does because he heals a horror from Peter. And you cannot heal cards from other than rational thought. So we can't use Peter to heal anything. 
we can only heal uh, from rational thought, which means we need our hypnotic therapy if we're going to do it. Um, but we are going to play our Pathfinder. And then we will investigate. So we'll go four versus two. Chaos Bag gives us a minus one. So we grab a clue there. Uh, we will use our Pathfinder to move back here. Then we will move here. Then we will move here. And that'll be our turn. Running around the historical society. No enemies. We get a shortcut. What's that doing in there? That should not be in there. Uh, hmm. Why is the shortcut in there? Shouldn't be in there. All right, we get a uh, take the initiative. That's confusing. I thought I took the shortcuts out. Yeah, there is one in there. Why are there two? Anyway. All right. So we get to take the initiative, uh, and we'll just move on to the mythos phase. Uh, no, we are not adding any doom. There is whispers in your head. Uh, doubt. Secretly add it to our hand. We cannot play events. Do we care about events? We have a ward of protection. Taken an extra action. What do you mean, doobies? We investigated, pathfinder, moved, moved. Did I make an error at some point? Let me know in the chat. Uh, we cannot play events. Do we care about this? Um, uh, we can ward or protection this, but I'd rather wait. So we'll just leave that. We'll just take it. We might get rid of it uh, this turn. We get our three actions. Uh, we need one clue, so we're going four versus two. Chaos Bag says mm, minus one, so we succeed. So we gain a clue. Now we can advance. So we will flip this over. For each revealed historical society location in play, add a clue to it. So there's a clue here and a clue here. Uh, choose an investigator to take control of Mr. Peabody. Uh, he is right here. So that's fine. Uh, we lose Peter, but that's, I mean, we couldn't use Peter really anyway uh, for his healing. Oh, I did take an extra action. Played Pathfinder, investigate. So I should be here. Then I would move. Whoops. Take an action to move in. Okay, let me go back here. Okay, so I was here. Take an action to move in investigate, grab the clue, advance, um, investigate, okay, we advance, we pathfinder, uh, getting ahead of myself. So we've taken, and we put the hidden library into play. I think I fixed it now. Because I played Pathfinder, that was one action. I investigated to move three, Pathfinder, move, investigate, advance, Pathfinder back, and then we just move again. So we're here, and uh, everything should be good. All right, so we put the hidden library into play. 
uh, locations with the passageway trait may be connected to are connected to one another. Only investigators in the hidden library may spend the requisite number of clues to advance. We need three clues. So basically, we just need to go into the uh, into the uh, hidden library, and then uh, we can advance. So we've got uh, passageway there. We can exhaust Peabody to turn this into a passageway, and uh, we are pretty much good to go. We draw, there's a logical reasoning. Okay, well that can heal some horror off of uh, rational thought. Uh, I think we're just gonna, we're just gonna beat this thing so quickly though that it's not gonna really matter. Uh, we will go to the next, the next phase, mythos phase. We draw, there is a let astray. We place one of our clues on a cultist enemy or we place a doom on the agenda it can advance. So the agenda is going to be advance. So we will uh, unlock that and we will advance. Uh, shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. And we advance to Agenda 2A, Ransacking the Manor. We don't add Doom, of course, and uh, cultists get... Uh... So, so far, so good. Uh, we will get our three actions. We will use one action on Peabody to choose a location. So the Hidden Chamber gains the Passageway trait. Uh, we will use a second action to move to the passage of the hidden library. It's a four shroud location with three clues, uh, but it has minus one shroud while it has the passageway trait. So we have one action remaining. Uh, we can investigate. So we will go five versus three. If we're successful, we get to search the top three cards. Chaos Bags is minus three, so we do not succeed. All right. Actually, we have one action because, we, yeah, you're right, Crazy Gamer. We have the Pathfinder move, so we have one more action uh, that we can use to investigate again. So we can go four versus three. And we get a zero. So we get one one clue out of the deal. All right. Cruising along here. There's our meat cleaver. So far, rational thought hasn't uh, really affected us all that much. But uh, that's the problem I have with this scenario. I keep playing it, and I keep thinking it's going to be a good game. And uh, it's just, if as long as you can investigate reasonably quickly, it's and you don't end up with too many cultists on the table, it can be a real uh, cakewalk. I am looking forward to uh, when this one gets buffed in uh, Return to the Path to Carcosa. This one, I think, could really use some tweaking to uh, to turn it up a bit. Turn, uh, yeah, definitely doobies. This one needs to, to be, they could turn the screws just a little bit, you know, make it a little bit more. Uh, I think you should have to get to, I think it would be much better if this scenario got to Agenda 3 so that, uh, so our friend here, the possessed oath speaker, was on the table, and you actually had to uh, to deal with him, because because right now it's yeah we're we've got basically two investigate actions to do, and we're we're done. Uh, mythos phase. There is whispers in our head. Anxiety. Now that one is uh, a problem because that one we cannot. Uh, we cannot advance. We cannot trigger free triggered abilities. So that one we're gonna have to get rid of. So let's do that now. We will take the two actions to get rid of that. And uh, yeah, we yeah, keen eye is a good good call, crazy gamer. We're not gonna use it this turn uh, because we're just uh, 
Actually, wait a sec. Okay, I got to do this differently because uh, I just realized I've got a better play. So what I can do because I've got the uh, I've got this take the initiative. If I use that as my first action, I get three. So I'll be at seven versus four, and I get a minus one. So then I, that was my first action. Then I take two actions to get rid of this uh, whispers in your head. All right. So we're going to drag this out another turn. And uh, there is a working the hunch. That's even better. Now we can just grab that clue uh, whenever we want to. Add a doom, but we don't. We draw a card. There's a Seeker of Carcosa. Any empty historical society location, he can go down here. Uh, after we have to add something to him. At the end of the Mythos phase, move one clue from the Seeker's location and place a Doom on him. So we will do that. And... That's going to be it, and I think we just win the game here. So we get our three actions. We can uh, we can't play events, so we cannot uh, uh, we can't play our working the hunch to grab that clue, but we can play this as a uh, we can commit that, and then we can throw all these resources to keen eye to give us plus two. So we are at four, five, six, seven, eight uh, versus four. Uh, yeah, that should be good. Chaos Bag gives us a minus one. We grab that clue and then we resign. Or we trigger it to advance because we've got three clues. A little anticlimactic. But uh, yeah, we do uh, we do cruise through that one without too much trouble. Uh, probably should have just cancelled that Whispers in your head with my Ward of Protection, but uh, I was worried about other cards, but we just went too quickly, and uh, we end up uh, putting up another W. So, very straightforward game. Not the uh, most interesting scenario, particularly after you've played the Unspeakable Oath. Um, I remember when I played this one the first uh, couple times, I was like, really, is that it? I was pretty sure I had done something wrong, but uh, yeah. Well, it is, uh, we've been streaming for about two hours, so uh, thank you very much, Chris. Uh, pretty straightforward scenario. So I think we're going to call the stream there. Just to, uh, thank you very much, Crazy Gamer. So just as a uh, some housekeeping, make sure you, uh, if you miss these streams, you will probably catch them on YouTube. I'm also uh, streaming on Twitch at uh, www.twitch.com slash manfromling and Mixer at uh, www.mixer.com slash uh, man underscore from underscore Lang. Uh, you can check out my Facebook page at uh, at the Whisperer in Darkness channel, uh, where I post uh, I post updates and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, if I've got uh, new videos coming out, I will be posting uh, tips there. You can also find me on Twitter at uh, Man From Lang. I often announce my streams on there too. So if you uh, want to head over to Twitter. And follow me, you can get updated when uh, I release new content. Now, uh, this Friday, I was planning on streaming, but I have uh, some uh, prior commitments that I need to deal with. So I will not be streaming this Friday. I am hoping to possibly record a, uh, the next uh, installment of my uh, Diana Stanley campaign. She is taking on um, At Death's Door. Thanks, John. Uh, so we, we, I believe uh, we earned six experience points when we uh, ran her through the witching hour. So we will upgrade that deck 
and uh, take her up against the uh, at death's doorstep. That'll be a blind playthrough, so uh, that should be fun. Uh, it's always interesting uh, to do these blind playthroughs and uh, and just sort of fumble along, and hopefully we'll do okay. Uh, we've got uh, playthroughs coming up as well for the secret name. Uh, the Wages of Sin, and For the Greater Good, and of course, Union and Disillusion. I've been falling a bit behind in those playthroughs, but uh, I've been enjoying streaming uh, with you guys uh, a great deal. I'm uh, very grateful for all of you showing up uh, to keep me company and uh, and help me out uh, and uh, win me a game. So uh, huge credit to the, to the chat and the doobies for that uh, victory on the Unspeakable Oath. So uh, I believe I am going to call it there. Thank you very much, everybody, for turning out today. Uh, stay tuned for future streams. And uh, also, I'll just remind everyone before I go that I will be, uh, I am planning on streaming uh, The Sinking City, the uh, new Lovecraftian investigation game that will be released next week. If you would like to be uh, notified of that, make sure you head over to my Facebook page. And I will be streaming that game to Twitch, so do head over to www.twitch.com slash manfromleng and, uh, and follow me there so, uh, so you can uh, catch up with, uh, with that game. I'm uh, very much looking forward to that. And uh, I will see you next time. That's going to do it for this day, this uh, stream. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to uh, like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang and Facebook at the Whisperer in Darkness channel. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there and happy investigating.